So welcome to the fourth episode of Identity International's webinar series, Kashmiri Beyond Conflict. This series will be running throughout the month of October, every Thursday and Saturday at 5 p.m. British Summer Time, where we will delve into the complexities of Kashmiri identity with our esteemed guests. To receive notifications and updates regarding this series, please follow our social media platforms and or register on our Eventbrite page by searching Kashmiri Beyond Conflict. Today, we will be in conversation with Bill Cole. Bill is an author, philosopher, columnist, editor, professional engineer, and politician. He was born in Kashmir, where he lived until December 1989. After initially working as an engineer in Malaysia for a few years, he migrated to Australia in 1997, where he continued to practice in his field of geotechnical engineering. He is a fellow and chartered professional engineer of Engineers Australia, Bill has written many books, with his latest being The Exiled Pandits of Kashmir, Will They Return Home, published by Springer, which is due for release on very soon, actually, the 17th of October 2020. He is contesting the 2021 Western Australian state election for the electorate of Bateman with the Western Australia Party. Um, so, yeah, thank you, Bill. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Dilam. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for the yes honor to be here. Great. So I guess the first question that I would like to pose to you, um, and it's, it's a deliberately open question, is to you personally, what does it mean to be Kashmiri? Uh, very interesting question, but a very pertinent question. I think if you ask this question to um, 1 million Kashmiris, 10 million Kashmiris, you'll have different answers, actually. So I'll have to be very specific. What does Kashmiri, uh, being Kashmiri mean to me, actually? Mm. Uh, I have, Kashmiri is, it's just part of me. It's just like, like your parents, you know? Your parents are always part of you. Your mother always is part of you. So is Kashmir. Kashmir is a part of me, the way I think. So I have, I have inherited directly certain things the way we think the way we do things you know from my parents and grandparents and relatives and friends and all that but i have genetically inherited lots of things from my ancestors so there's a way of thinking there was, there's a way of doing things there is there's a way of analyzing things and looking at things and it's all about so there are there are always you know so the good bad and the ugly you know in us kashmiris so it's all accepting all that that this is the way we are and um, it, it is like in, it's in daily life, you know, uh, missing snow in, in Kashmir in winter months, missing frozen streets where you could slip, uh, uh, the power shortages, uh, sorry, uh, outages, anytime it can go, uh, uh, muddy streets because Kashmir has alluvial soil and all that. When it rains, the things become muddy a bit. Uh, missing chinar leaves uh, in summer when uh, it's, it's hot and humid and, and sting at the chinar tree. We, we call it shuhul or shejar. Um, that's it's a unique, you don't have an equivalent word in English, you know, for shejar actually. It's soothing coolness, more, more spiritual kind of thing. And then missing chinar trees when they're, they call it burning chinars in autumn, red chinar trees, how you roll yourself in the garden on the leaves and and the sound they make missing the greetings you know uh people how we greet each other um visiting uh and greeting muslim neighbors and friends on eid and receiving greetings uh on the occasion of uh, herat uh, uh it's a very special uh, day for uh, kashmiri pundits and how we eat, what we eat, and prime most language, what we speak, humor, art, music, culture, roof. There are so many things which distinguish Kashmiris from every everybody else. You know, it's a unique place, and the people are so beautiful. Really, um, I think that's really sweet as well, the way you kind of see some of the sense of nostalgia almost. 
um, you know, that place of home. Do you also feel that um, borders make a difference as to how you relate to other Kashmiris, so like to the diaspora and within Kashmir itself? Sorry, uh, I, I just lost it. I, the, the voice wasn't very clear. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So I was saying, do you also feel like um, borders make a difference to how you relate to other Kashmiris? Um, so within the diaspora um, and also within Kashmir itself? Uh, when you meet a Kashmiri, it's not very, very difficult to just relate to a Kashmiri. You just switch on to a Kashmiri and 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 kosher and th there's a way it's just like you, you, you are blood blood relatives you know so uh you, you immediately click to that and and in your mind you just go back to the valley you know it doesn't matter where you are on the planet it's it's just in you and in my in my in my uh, opinion, you know, uh, I feel uh, our identity, the way we are, the way we relate. Uh, it, if it's not preserved, uh, and that too consciously, uh, because um, in this world of uh, globalization, people are spread across the world, mm -hmm. and uh, once you are across the world, we we have the influence of other cultures on us, and sometimes the other cultures can be more overbearing, and you just lose it; it becomes diluted. So um, being in touch uh, with the nursery, you know, the motherland is essential. And what it means to be, that's very, impo very important for, uh, for the culture to survive. And that's very important. It needs very conscious effort. Great. And so what aspects of Kashmiri culture do you most identify with? My Kashmiri spirituality. My Kashmiri values. Um, there's a way of looking at things in Kashmir, you know. Um, the Kashmir I was uh, born and raised. Uh, it was it was very spiritual. Um, uh, we used to we have many ziyarts there, you know. Um, the Kashmir, as it's known as the value of uh, saints, uh, peers, and rishis, and you know all those um, mystics. The, is, is full of that and and in Kashmir you know there are many places the uh, uh, Sahib, you know Rishpi Sahib, and you know we have uh, so uh, and there are there are stories behind these these mystics and rishis and peers you know and people all people from all backgrounds uh, would visit and uh, and pay respects and ask you know what our pray you know you just and then you fulfill it uh, so that that was unique you know you, you would go to temple uh, you, you you would hear the azan at the same time it, it was it was a very unique culture the kashmir i have i was born and raised uh, oh, we used to live in the downtown srinagar uh, where you have predominant muslim population mm -hmm. um, and uh, the brethren, the, the, it, it, it was different, you know, the whole environment was different. It was a beautiful tapestry of culture, same culture, uh, but a slightly different way of doing things, but but the way they were interwoven, it was it, it was very, very beautiful, which, which, I, which I really miss um, as time goes by. I really miss that, that, mm -hmm the Kashmiri values. Any Kashmiri mother, you know how, how she greets? Balai Lagai. It is, it is um, a mother, Pandit mother or a Muslim mother. The mothers, how they embrace you, you know, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember when um, I was married, and, you know, uh, we had moved to a different area, a newer area. And uh, our uh, neighbors from the older area, they came, they were all Muslims, you know. And I remember, you know, our next door neighbor, you know, and then how she, she was wearing a burqa and how she ran and she cried and, and she gave me a hug. And, you know, the first thing is balai laga. It means, um, it, it's just like what you say to, say to your own child. And uh, that was, that was it, that lull, that, that lull, uh, which well, is not anywhere. You know, it, it wasn't artificial. Kashmiris were never artificial. 
they were just genuine a bit rough around the edges but they were, they were they were you know and not to show i mean everything was sufiana the clothing that we used to wear you know the shades of earthy colors and all that that's kashmiri original kashmiri uh, kashmiri shawls and all that so we would seldom see colors like red and blue and all that stuff it was more earthy sufiana that's how it, i was the kashmir for me is that right um and I guess that kind of leads them nicely to, I guess, the other question, the way you're saying you kind of miss the way things were and, and that sort of togetherness as well. Um, so in that regard, how do you feel like the conflict has also shaped your Kashmiri identity or impacted on that? Uh, the conflict, yes. This, uh, this, is, this, is, this is very unfortunate what happened. Our identity is at stake, actually, with the conflict. Uh, the people who have left Kashmir, both uh, mm -hmm. the Muslims and the Pandits. Don't, don't be confused. The Muslims and Pandits are not two different people. They are same people. <laughs> they are same, same people, you know. And uh, it's the same, same DNA, same background, same genetics. There's nothing, no difference, except, um, and 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 and. When I, when I come back to Pandits and Kashmir and, and Muslims, when you say Kashmiri Pandits, you know, they don't have much resemblance with the nearest, you may call it Hindu, the word wasn't existing as a new word actually, with the, the Jammu Dogras. There is not much common between Kashmiri Pandit practices and the Jammu Dogras. Even the names are different, what they call Shivratri, we call here, but we different celebrate differently, you know, what they call Jannam Ashtami, we call Jannam Zarm Satam, which is different, different day, different um, philosophy. So even the practices are quite different. So uh, uh, this is a unique, Kashmiri Pandit is unique, it's unlike any other, um, what you say, Hindu of India, it's, it's different, different practices, primarily Shaivism, which is right from the past, and Shaivism was very compatible with Sufism, very compatible. And now after this conflict, now that many Kashmiris are out of Kashmir and Kashmiris who are living in Kashmir. Kashmir is out of Kashmir for some time in Australia. Okay, and uh, we, we are, we get influenced, our younger generations get influenced by, by other cultures, uh, global culture, and that, that takes, takes over. So it's, it's, it becomes very difficult for, for parents imbibe or or um, bring home the message to the younger generations that you got to be uh, you know um, in touch with your with your Kashmiri culture but unfortunately not many uh, parents themselves know what it is being you know what it means being a Kashmiri so so it gets lost so if they get they replace it and it becomes a hybrid culture and finally it's a something else similarly in the valley now that uh, whatever has happened in Kashmir uh, post um, 19 uh, August 19, uh, abrogation of 370, when people from outside mm -hmm. uh, have been allowed to come in and all that, that has a, a serious repercussion on on the on the Kashmiri identity. So um, it can take over. Uh, it can it can bring with it a different culture from outside. And so unless the people, Kashmiri people who are living in Kashmir are proactively, um, you know, trying to preserve their identity, their culture, uh, it'll be it'll be taken away. That's what happens. You know, Bollywood, Bollywood has its own, it, it, it Bollywood invades, Bollywood enters homes, the way we um, organize weddings and all that. Bollywood has a different, brings a different culture to the Indian households. And, and the influence goes beyond the Indian borders. Uh, even in South Asia, you know, I see, oh, even in Africa, wh whatever, you know, it just, it, it's very invasive. And, and, and there's a risk with that. So, uh, yeah, our identity post uh, abrogation of Article 370, uh, globally, I would say, it's much more endangered. It's uh, much more threatened than before. Um, I guess, that's quite interesting as well how you think it's more because of, sort of what happened last year um and have you sort of seen any examples or heard of any examples of this kind of identity erasure um since then obviously i know it's 
only last year, but um, have you had any of those sort of experiences or have you even felt that way yourself, obviously having been in Kashmir and then moving to Australia sort of personally? Well, look, you know, uh, I have not myself experienced, but I, um, you know, how do we, how do we write? Because I observe, I observe, I think, I contemplate. And I always think about the future. Um, the past is good to look at. Past is good to learn from, but past should not, you know, bog us down. But it's always the future you have to keep in view. What's going to happen in the future if this keeps on happening like this? There is, a, a, for example, Kashmiri pundits, okay, who are who are out, you know, um, most of them. Are, I don't know, twenty, thirty thousand. Kashmiri pandas could be still in Kashmir, and many are living in Jammu, uh, and most are everywhere else. Uh, there is an attempt to call them Kashmiri Hindus. Uh, okay, now this is this is a new term for for me, because a Kashmiri Hindu doesn't mean same as a Kashmiri panda, and even in Kashmir, the Kashmiri pandas would not be called Kashmiri pandas. They should be called Batas. Koshur Bata. So, so in colloquial, in, in daily colloquial, butta is a butta. Butta may be coming from the Sanskrit word, a but means a learned one, the butta. So Kashmiri butta then became in government records, it became Kashmiri Pandit. And now it's changing to Kashmiri Hindu. So when it's become a Kashmiri Hindu, and some Kashmiri Pandits themselves also try to call them Kashmiri Hindu, it makes something different. It's a, it's a it's a different thing because I don't see myself. I don't have any like the, the Hinduism. If I to the extent I know, um, it doesn't have one book. You know, do this and do that. There's no one. It it is a way. It's a way of life. Okay, and a person from Maharashtra will be different from UP. Different different things because um, it, it, the practices are very you know social practices and all that they come into this and they are not actually religion they are more uh, social practices so okay, making it a kashmiri hindu uh, makes it a bit different than being a kashmiri pandit because kashmiri pandit meant something else it meant something else and uh, it it came with uh, with a lot of tradition uh you know for example there are a lot of Hindu practices which Kashmiri pandits would not follow, but now they have started following that also, and that will be fine if you add to it. But then you look at it, you know, what about your own practices? Are you following that? Oh no, so they have shifted, so they are becoming more like the other Indian Hindus. So Kashmiri only becomes a, remains a name, uh, just a name. That's all. So that's where the identity part comes into play. It's just almost gone. It's just a name. Uh, what does you ask them? You know, you're a Kashmiri. How are you? Kashmiri? Can you speak Kashmiri? No, because I feel shy. My parents don't speak Kashmiri with me. They feel shy. You feel inferior. And the same thing is happening in in Kashmir Valley also. Speaking in Kashmiri had started in from 1970s 80s only you know it has started becoming kind of a kashmir was relegated to be a language of um, the backward people uneducated people so people had started shifting to north kashmir languages you know so although the medium of education was in english uh, predominantly and but then the people at home the children at home would speak not kashmiri and the, those who would go to english medium convents and all that they had started speaking something else at home so it had started happening from 70s 80s now it is much more exasperated you know um yeah so la when language is gone you know uh, that's the first start can you speak kashmiri no i can't but what do you know about kashmiri for example kashmiri pandit kukri you know traditional kashmiri pandit kukri has no tomato or onion or garlic or anything else even damalu it has nothing it, is, it doesn't have any Kashmiri Damalu, it doesn't have uh, a tomato or garlic or, um, or uh, you know, um, garlic, anything. But now if you say, oh, it's Kashmiri Damalu, you go to a shop here and it will be having all those things, which is just like any other potato. It's not a Damalu. <laughs> Thank you. That was, that was really interesting and insightful as well. Um, and I think sort of talking more about sort of 
being Kashmiri pandit and your identity with that as well. Um, it'd be really interesting to also sort of know more about your book that's going to be getting published soon, sort of the inspiration behind that, the process behind that, um, because it's, it's called Exiled Pandits of Kashmir Will They Return Home? Um, yes. Great to hear more about that too. Yes. Okay, you'll be surprised. This is this is actually my fifth book. I had submitted this book uh, to the publisher on the day, 5th August 2019 morning, 5 o'clock, it was submitted. And then that day only, Article 370 was abrogated. In the book, in the original version of the book, I had, because some pundits, I would visit India four or five times a year. So my interaction and also go to Kashmir. I used to go to Kashmir two, three times a year. And I was trying to get more reconciliation for Kashmir. And I had managed to get a good deal of understanding um, with, with, with people from both communities. And with pundits who are living in Jammu and camps, and they said, we want to go back to Kashmir. Are you afraid? No, we are not afraid. We want to go. We want to go. We trust. We trust our Muslim brothers more. We want to go. Only me, we need some uh, some kind of accommodation, some sustenance and all that. And, mm -hmm. and um, Kashmiri Muslims also, same way. Yes, we want to have pundit brothers back. So I was getting it out. So I wrote this book. Uh, I started this book sometimes in 2019 February up to August six months I really worked hard to make a platform because it provided a philosophy why should Kashmiri pundits who want to go out of their own volition and for all good reasons right reasons go back and why should uh, Kashmiri Muslims receive them and help them in settling down why does Mother Kashmir, we call it Merj Kashir, why M Mother Kashmir needs all her children to be complete for her progress, prosperity, both sides. And this is a philosophy. And I submitted on the morning. And in this, because some, some pundits, uh, not from Jammu, not, from, not these camps, 30,000 people, other people, oh, well, when Article 370 is abrogated, we can go. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. So, and I made a I made a um, um, argument there. What is Article Three Seventy? Can it be? Can it not be? Should it be? Should it not be? <coughs> Sorry, I just um, it's, it's my dry cough. We don't have any COVID here now for the last six months in 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 Western Australia, That's and uh, but I have been because I have been speaking with people during my election campaigning and all that, so I get this sometimes. <laughs> <clears throat> so, and that day it happened, and then I didn't hear anything from my publishers until May. In the meantime, I wrote one more book, a bouquet of random thoughts. That is my number six, a bouquet of random thoughts, conversations with myself. <clears throat> in that also, I have spoken about Kashmir. There are sections in about Kashmir. There's a section about politics. There's there's an argument why why India and Pakistan should become friends. There is a section on Prime Minister Imran Khan of Pakistan. There's a section on Prime Minister Modi of India. Why they should join hands and you know lots of things about Kashmir. So yeah, I've written a lot in that. That got published. And then I went straight to there's a, there's a book I wrote co-authored with uh, a noted author of uh, India, uh, Vijay Shankar. And the charm triangle, uh, religion, science, and spirituality. <coughs> so sorry. In that also, Kashmir is there. In one form or the other form, Kashmir is there in that book. That got published just about a month ago. During COVID days, I started a book on we humans, which I finished in July. It's a 350-page book, we humans. Mm -hmm and how we behaved during the initial 100 days of COVID, our good, bad, and the ugly. It, it mentions Kashmir. There's a chapter on Kashmir in this. Each, so there are, I have two books on Kashmir. 
and in the remaining books there is either a full chapter or there are sections on Kashmir. You can't get Kashmir out of me, uh, away from me. <coughs> Sorry. So yeah, so we humans uh, is is a reflection on us, and as I say in that book, you know, this book is for for humans who are not born yet, and they must know how we behaved, even 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 during COVID, even during pandemic, when we should be all together, and Kashmir has not been in peace. It's not peaceful. No. <coughs> Sorry. Fine, yes. So, uh, so that I, uh, so my we humans is my is my latest book. It talks about the black deaths in custody around the world. You know George Floyd and how it flavor. Oh, then the processions and all that in protests in 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 the UK, in Australia, the abortional, the Dalits in India, Islamophobia in India, uh, xenophobia in Australia and in China. So. It takes about all our 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 good also. Some of us are are like angels, you know, working day and night to save lives. And our bad, yes, and our ugly. So this book captures all the three shades of us human beings. And Kashmir has a chapter in it. It has a chapter about Kashmir, we humans, and also it also has the chapter of, about geopolitics, about uh, about geopolitics between India, China, Pakistan, and uh, on the behest of third countries' powers, you know, what's happening and how the world is really under danger, and uh, at least until the end of this month. <laughs> yes, so that's my latest one. But I just received the soft copy of my book this morning. Oh. Exiled Pandits. <laughs> So it should be. I think it's already out. It's been. It's already being sold. Yes, yes. It's already sold by Springer. I received my my soft copy today. Yes. That's so it, it's very strange. This was my this was my fifth book, and it became my eighth book <laughs> because because Springer took eight seven eight months to assess the situation because they came back to me in May. And they said, all right, in your first, it was reviewed by experts. And they said, OK, you had made an argument that Article 370 cannot be abrogated and should not be abrogated. But now it has happened. It happened on the same day when I submitted, you know, 5th of August last year. Wow. I said, now what do you say? Now the world knew about it. So then in May, I had to add, I think, 11 pages in it. What exactly happened, how it happened, uh, on 5th August, it didn't. It, the process didn't start on 5th August. It's, the process started somewhere on the 1st August. 1st, 2nd, 3rd, what happened, how things happened in Kashmir, and how it was all, how it brewed, and what happened on that night. And so I explained everything and what happened in the days and weeks and, and months in Kashmir. Uh, it makes me a bit emotional. Um, and how those uh, seven month, eight month lockdown then passed into a lockdown of COVID. And it's been already more than a year. And and the world doesn't know about it. So I I speak, whatever I speak, I have, I have been lecturing on Kashmir here in Perth, you know, in various gatherings. Mm. And when I ask people, do you know what happened in Kashmir? No, I said, this happened in Kashmir. Oh, is it? I said, no, yes. This happened and you people don't know about it because the world doesn't talk about it because there are political economic interests you know and then people don't speak about it and this is exactly happened this is how it happened and uh, so uh that, that 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 that's something which 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 weighs heavily on my mind uh, it, it's not. It's not what happened. Actually, in, I, I live in a democratic country. You know, the democratic uh, the, the democracy index of Australia is in the top. Is the top democracy one of the top? You know, in the top ten countries. Mm. So here, anything happens by consensus and by consent. You know, by referendum. Um, it it can't be. It can't be a surprise to the world. And uh, so, uh, 
I expect a similar process should have been followed in, 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 in India also, in Kashmir also, and not, um, uh, if, if people would have been happy with it, if there would have been consensus in the referendum or something, okay, should we abrogate Article 370 uh, dialogue, then not a problem with that. But the way it happened, it's the way it happened that really uh, raises uh, a million eyebrows. Uh, and it's, 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 it's the way it happened. Uh, what happened? If people would have been happy with that, not a problem with that. But then there are many states in India where uh, you have you have a, a special status, you know, uh, Nagaland and all that stuff, you know, under different sections of Article 3, 371 D something. So uh, and the shocking thing was that the state was uh, downgraded, it was bifurcated, and it was all done without the dialogue uh, yeah, about consultation with the people who live there. So it's the way it happened, which which raises a million eyebrows, maybe a billion eyebrows. We are eight people begin on the earth. I would say yes. Yeah, that's so that it really endangers us uh, Kashmiris because we may not remain the same. And also, kind of um, building on sort of what you were saying when you were sort of talking to sort of peers in Australia and trying to. Explain even talk about the situation um how have you felt in general trying to navigate um through places like australia and things like that as a kashmiri as someone who's so passionate about what's going on there um has it been quite difficult to get that like awareness and the message out more oh uh, no uh, okay and now um, uh, mainstream australians know i mean because they don't know because it's not being talked about, you know, our media doesn't talk about it much. So they won't know. But once you speak with them and uh, and if they, they will listen to you and and they also raise their eyebrow, you know, and that's how Australians are actually. Uh, but then if you speak with uh, with Australians of um, Indian background, so there is a mixed reaction about it. Uh, <clears throat> some some Indian Australians, you know, they have welcomed Article 370 because when you ask them, do you know what it means and all that, they don't have the idea. Many people have been given to understand that Kashmir has been now conquered. There was... Indian flag never flew there. It has been now conquered. It was something about the history, what happened in 47. They have no idea. They have no idea about the history of Kashmir. They have no, they have no idea about how, uh, why Article 370 was there. They have no idea. So when you, when you educate them, they will listen. But there are some people who don't want to listen. So once you engage with them, once you tell them, no, no, there was a reason. This was the reason, you know. Uh, get them back to history because people don't read people don't read they will just believe you whatever you tell them and that comes through whatsapp so whatsapp machine is there it's a propaganda machine and uh, people believe oh yeah okay yeah yes now we have one kashmir it's our ours so engage with them engagement is very important but mainstream australian uh once he knows or she knows and then yeah they say well it's not it's not right what happened in kashmir but People are beginning to know what happened in Kashmir. So, <clears throat> so it, it, it comes down, boils down to each one of us, Kashmiris, to do uh, her or his part in, in educating the world, you know, what, who we are, and how we do things, and, and about our Kashmir, you know. This is, this is it. Uh, so it comes, boils down to us. You speak, you write, what else you can do? Because after all, that's how we Kashmiris have always been doing. <laughs> you have to, you have, you have to educate the world about yourself and about Kashmir. Great, thank you. I think that was quite a powerful um, last statement as well, and the importance of just raising awareness and speaking mm. about these kinds of things. Yes. Um, Thank you so much for joining us today and giving us your incredible insight and even sort of learning about the journey of you getting submitting this book on like August and that whole um, 
journey from there until now um i will definitely be on like the lookout of purchasing your book and the we the humans one as well sounds super interesting um we'll add the links um into the bio and things of this video as well for anyone else interested and um thank you to our audience um for watching our next episode will be on thursday at the same time uh, we will be in conversation with academic Dr. Mohammed Zanaid. Um, thank you again, everyone, um, from Identity International. Thank you.